and we're live episode 39 but not 39 if you're on youtube of the castle keepers guide and it's me you and jackie boy hey jack how are you hello my dear how are you i am mellowing out i am mellowing out we're gonna have a great little session of finishing up this map ink work tonight and we're just gonna hang out we're gonna chill with friends i'm gonna show you what i'm drawing and how i'm drawing it but before we get there i want to thank all of you maplings your subscribers to twitch the subscribers on my patreon i love you all very much you make this channel what it is and we've just got Wargaming Week on subscribing. Wargaming Week on, thank you very, very much. Huzzah. Huzzah, indeed. Let's get our touch screen on. Let's go on over. Let's talk about what we're about to do tonight. We have our castle, our final castle drawn. I am going to get all of our little details in here, our little hatches and our stairs and our paths and our plants. That's what we're going to do tonight. A little some stonework. I am invested in finishing this thing in the next hour and a half or so. Walk in we come. Much love to you, man. Three months. Love you very, very much. Phantom Jen. Mwah. From Jack and Ice. Good to see you as well. Hello. All right. How's everyone doing? I have obviously been offline while I've been playing computer games, specifically Cyberpunk. Jack, what is our topic of discussion tonight? <clears throat> well, uh, speaking of Cyberpunk, I don't know if you saw CD Projekt Red actually put out a little statement today. Oh, indeed. Okay. Um, I did not th see that. They were basically acknowledging that there were bugs in all the, all, all across the board, um, and they were letting pretty much console people know that just you just so you guys know, we're working very hard to you know you know fix bugs, and we're the, the first big patch for you console people is probably going to come out in January. Uh, the, a second big patch is going to come out in February. People on computer, you're you're going to get a whole bunch of little ones as we put them out. Pretty much all the time and um if you are truly disappointed and upset by the product that you were given uh we will work with you with whatever platform you bought it for in order to get you a refund oh wow okay okay so yeah thoughts on that what are the file dimensions for necropolis wow okay talk about hijacking the stream um, all right, so hold on a sec. I'm, I'm gonna have to open up a completely different map here. A little bit of elevator music, a little bit of a cat whining in the background. And I realized I've got to do battlements tonight. This is taking a while because I'm now opening the Cropolis. Hmm. Okay, so hold on a sec. I'm sorry about this, everyone. Um, I wasn't planning on having this particular discussion live. All right, um, Phantom Gen, Zach, 66 inches wide, 81 inches tall, 40, uh, 450 DPI. Keep in mind that um, there is a second level to this as well. And I, I'm putting that in the chat too. Please confirm receipt, because I would like to close the propolis down. Uh, I can't want both. Hmm. 
Right, Jack, fill the void. Um, um, so yeah, just uh, 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 that looks like Wargaming's actually asking about our cyberpunk experience, and if we've, uh, you know, I, I, I gotta say, it's um, it's it's very entertaining. It's um, it's very it's a, it's very addicting. It's very fun. I um, and it looks like uh, Phantom Gen says all good. Thank you. All right, cool. Um, but yeah, it's um. I, you know, uh, Alyssa and I have um, experienced, uh, you know, a number of glitches. She and I have spoken about them amongst ourselves, and you know, she she brought up some of them on her post on Facebook. And um, they are hello, Alex Fixin. Hello, hello, Alex Fixin. Um, and um, but yeah, but n none of my glitches. I had one that was um, it was game breaking. You know, I arrived at a location before the quest, uh, before um, the main quest um, was uh, going to have me go there. And it's like the game didn't know what to do with the fact that I had already gone there. And so I couldn't get like the doors open because the NPC that normally guards the door, they didn't want to could do the same exact interaction in order to let me in. Because normally once you have that interaction, you can then come and go, so please in this building. Well, because I had already gotten there, the main quest was like, but you need to talk to the person to get into this place. What the hell? And so because of that, I couldn't get in. So I actually had to go back. I had to reload a game that was pretty far back um, from when I was starting to free explore the map without doing the main quest. And so that was a bit of a that was a bit of a bum. That was a bit of a, a disappointment. And but the graphical glitches for us haven't been game breaking. They haven't been like there there they haven't, hasn't been any big problems in that regard. Um, and so it's been great. It looks great. It plays great. I'm extremely entertained. This, this, the plot is is very um, intriguing. The, the the loot system that they have um, is in the fact that all the weapons you can find are in weapons and gear is all completely random. It's it's hitting all of my buttons for a video game. I love it. Personally. Yeah, and I'm kind of in the same boat. Um, I've been enjoying the game. There are definite bugs. There's a lot of weird bugs in the game. Princess Strega, thank you for the subscription. Um, there's a lot of weird bugs in the game. Um, you know, like not being able to pick up things because I've clipped through the ground a little bit or not being able to pick up things even though you're standing right next to it. Like back it up, back it up, moving around to try and actually sort of pick up something. You know, that's what an aggravating one. The game launched without the middle mouse button working, and yet you have to use the middle mouse button for a lot of things, and you can't remap it in all instances. So, and that was not on all mice, but I was definitely on a, a friends of our mouse and my mouse. So there were some just annoyances in the game. I did notice a T-pose once, but then it, it went back to normal until I went back in the room and the guy T-posed again. So th there's just... Lots of little, little, little things, you know, going on in there. Um, and Jack, I don't know if you've noticed, but now when I shut down my game, it it, it, it creates a bug report. Oh, really? I did not notice that. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting that too now. Oh, indeed. Yeah, I don't I don't have that. Interesting. Okay, so, you know, it's a good game. Out. I'm really enjoying it. Probably up to about 40 hours in the darn thing, for Christ's sake. So it's got to have something going for it. But it's definitely not a hugely polished title. Yeah. Not at launch. Not at launch. There's no way that they didn't have a discussion over there talking about keeping it back even more, but couldn't because of like revenue streams, etc. Right, and I'm pretty sure we would have uh, the entire gaming community would have marched on Poland and burned down the building. <laughs> the too much cyberware thing, I don't know because it's slot driven. Let's say your arm can have one item your hand can have one item your body can have three and i've not even got half of what i can have but i i so i can't answer that question i'm gonna guess no though and the reason for that being if if the game says that you can have let's say two things in your body and you you put or uh, well, three in your body and one in your arm and one in your thigh and one in your ankles and you fully equip and then your character goes into some kind of um, cyber shock because of it. I'm going to guess that people would be a little bit pissed off by that, you know? Right. Because that also would cost, like, a lot of freaking in-game money to, to buy it all. And so if your character actually suffered because you just maxed everything out, and there's nothing in the game has indicated that thus far. So I'm going to say no. That's my educated guess. 
Yeah, the um, the only cyber psychosis that they have in the game are 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 are, are uh, plot driven, um, like side quests, mini quests. There's a lot of cyber psychosis things, but that's NPCs, not you. Mm. That's so. true. Yeah, it does exist in NPCs a lot. Uh, Princess said she was in the middle of watching Crisis on Infinite Earths, one episode left. Now, that's the, the, the Arrowverse TV show series, right? Princess has actually been watching a lot of things recently. Oh, and Wargaming, I think we're pretty far from the end. Um, Alyssa and I don't like to rush to beat games. We like to enjoy the experience. We like to take our time. We don't feel like we need to, like, we need to beat the game so we can say we beat it so um i think i i couldn't even tell you i think overall um i'm probably 20 percent through the main storyline because there's actually multiple storylines i think i'm exactly 20 percent through uh, the main storyline and i think there's three storylines that i looked at tonight where it's tracking um a progress against it but like jack and i'd like to walk around in game on that type of thing and uh, do all of the side quests we're not completionists by any stretch but we will enjoy what else is in the game i i think i'm probably going to hit about 80 100 hours before i finish this game main quest wise anyway yeah yeah i i, I would agree i mean there's so much there's so much to do so much you know fun to be had you know even looking at like my you know even looking at my skill tree it's one of those things where it's like i haven't i'm so far away from even getting close to like a max level on one of them and i got to imagine because i haven't i haven't read to see if there's a level cap or anything but i got to imagine that you know you can at least max out two whole attributes at least i would assume so because there's there's a lot of skills that require you to be at max of a particular attribute. It's not like there's like you lead up and then finally you get to like the final one. It's like I actually was just looking at a tree um, the other uh, just earlier today, and it was like it had three skills that each of them needed your attribute to be at max. And I was like, holy crime and Christmas! That's that's those are really powerful and expensive skills. Ooh, Princess Strega says that yes, she has been on a movie binge uh, lately. She gave herself a week trial of stars, so she's been perusing their catalog. Okay. Okay. Cool. Oh, and Wargaming is playing the WoW expansion Shadowlands and enjoying that story. Oh, uh, yeah. He mentioned that on the Discord. So, everyone in chat, I'm going to tell you now, and then it's going to get repeated later on. Um, I'm not sure it's actually... I'll tell you about Elizabeth. Yes, okay, so it's kind of related to Elizabeth. So... So, here's a scoop. Here's a scoop. Hit exclamation raffle. And I will tell you what that is all about. And hopefully exclamation raffle is working. If it's not, I will have to turn it on because I haven't seen Pex in the chat. So try that someone for me. All right, then I'm going to have to turn this on. Uh, so hold on a sec. I was hoping uh, Pex would be here to do this. So I think it's a... Giveaway. Spend that out. All right. Try exclamation raffle again. There you go. Look, he's telling you about it. There you go. Well, game recon. You just got two tickets, princess. You got two tickets. So what is this ticket thing? So. Every day uh, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of this week, and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, but then also on my social media channels, 
12 giveaways in total, we are running little raffles. And tonight is the first one, okay? If you are a subscriber to the channel, you get an extra ticket. So, at the end, we're going to stop the giveaway. It will automatically roll against everyone that's bought some tickets. And tonight, you have a chance of getting a t-shirt or a hoodie with one of my maps on it. My maps have been added to t-shirts and hoodies on NobleDwarf.com. Go check it out. But one of you lucky people are going to actually win one. So that's the good news. Then we're, go we're going to have cups available. And there'll be some canvas prints. Next week there's going to be a big canvas prints. Okay, one that you actually cost quite a bit on the store. $80, I think, if our memory serves. We're also going to do a painted miniature from Reaper, one of their Christmas miniatures. You're going to get to pick which one. I will paint it in Q1 of next year. You'll get it. And Friday, when we do our little hangout, don't forget, put it in your calendar, 5 o'clock PST. We're going to hang out. We're just going to chat. And we're going to pick a winner. It'll be through a random die roll or something. And that person is going to get signed copies of my uh, Call of Cthulhu Keeper's Guide and Investigator's Guide. And then I think it's next week we're going to do Island of Ignorance, a book by Golden Goblin. I did the maps inside that book. I'm going to sign it as a Cthulhu book. Someone will win that as well. So lots and lots and lots and lots of giveaways in the 12 days of Elizabeth. That's what it's about. Awesome. That's awesome. And Phantom Gen, feel free to hit exclamation raffle. And anyone else who's not done it. And the shipping on me, okay, I will ship it to you. So even if you're in Scotland, looking at you, Alex Fixon, you can win one. I will pay for the shipping to you. If you're in Australia, shh, don't tell Miss J. You can wear pyjamas to the hangout, of course you can. So that's Elizabeth in a nutshell. Every day we're giving something away. I am not part of the raffle, Cave Geek. Oh, is Cave Geek here? Yeah, he's, he's just, see, I wanted to know where I'm being shipped. <laughs> well, it could be the 13 days of Elizabeth. Me now. Oh, I don't know yet. Dang it. Cave, hit an exclamation raffle if you haven't already. You can win too. In the same way, I won something on your channel. Yeah, you just have to, um, you just have to, you know, um, what? You just need to pay me in cyberpunk and pillows. And I'm, and I'm all set. Then, I, then I'm ready to work. I need a, a nice, comfy place to sleep, and I need a need a video game. Then suddenly, next thing I know, I'm sweeping up the yard, and I'm like, "What the hell is happening?" If you're not here, by the way, when we do the drawing, don't worry about it. We will capture the name, and I will contact you, and we'll give it like a week or so for the person to contact me back, saying, "Okay, I will need a shipping address, of course," but we'll figure that out. In fact, what we're probably gonna do is. Um, give you a coupon so you can just pick it up off the store yourself, but we'll figure out the details directly in a private message. Kiki, yes, I did win something that I have yet to claim. That is 100% correct, sir. Oh, where did you win? I don't know. Uh, it's Cave's Geek Wall. And <laughs> it, was, it was something he ran about six months ago or so. Oh. Sweet. But I, I think it was one of those things where Cake Geek said, Hey, congratulations, you've won something. You, it could be a, a simple map of your choice. And I was like, uh, I don't know what I want. And the whole thing kind of stalled. You know me. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, kids and bunnies. Uh, bunnies are great. I'll just leave it at that. Jack, if you know what you want, map-wise, Cape Geek will make it for you. Oh, good lord. It could um, even be a thong. It could be a, a, a leather thong. I'm sure he would make it for you. Is That if, uh, that sounds like that's a more of a your request for me than... Uh, I don't know. I think that's request. everyone requesting it. I, I think we'd all get behind that. 
Oh, good lordy. That's, I, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm scarred by my own image of that. Please no. Please no. See? War um, game with Recon wants it. Oh, he's not making an original. It's a print. Oh, it's a print giveaway. Okay. What, you wouldn't make him a thong? Oh, really? Good lordy. Congratulations, you won. What do you want? I don't know. I've never won before. Yeah, that's pretty true. It's a... Oh, uh, Princess is saying that she won a graphic novel adaptation of The Wizard of Oz yesterday. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Now, was it a, a faithful like adaptation of Wizard of Oz, or was it kind of one of those cool like reimaginings that they sometimes do, or like you know known IP? Okay, if you don't want to do a Photoshop with me in a in a thong. Oh, do we? Don't 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 do that to yourself. I mean, have you ever seen a Shoggoth do a sexy dance? I mean, that's that's what we're talking about here. I mean, you're not a Shoggoth. <laughs> cool, princess. I would yeah, I would I would love to I would love to hear. I know you're not, I know there's no body shaving here, but it's not body shaving, it's madness and tentacles. That's that's and and, and things. Eyes, too many eyes. Oh good lord. <laughs> Exclamation <laughs> redeem Jack Fog is not a thing. But apparently what is it wrong is wrong with you people. Apparently it is now a thing. <sighs> A list of special present for the Winter Veil. Mm. <laughs> Alex Wixon, yes, Jack, I have seen a Shoggoth do a sexy dance. Our GM added an extra D12 sand loss to the sand damage. Yes. Marlin's girl does a little like banana doing a WTF. <laughs> I'm sorry you had to walk into a weird, a very weird conversation, Marlin's girl. That was perfect timing, Marlin's girl. She <laughs> comes in going, what the hell is going on around here? Jack won a leather thong from Cave Geek. That That's what's going on here. Nope. 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 Oh, Marlin's girl. Hit exclamation raffle, you young lady. Do I do I have a hole? A hole in my bucket. Speaking of holes and things, I, I tell you, I'm so glad I got that um, boat printed for you today. I don't know if anybody else has ever done 3D printing and if they've ever encountered a weird situation. I had a thing where the model was a perfect solid model, but if you rotated it 90 degrees up, suddenly a giant chunk of the model disappeared. So if you tried to print it, it would end at a certain point because it would have this giant empty space before it was trying to get to the next spot. It was so bizarre. Um, literally, the only difference to printing it flat and printing it upright, just that 90 degree shift, that was it, went from a solid model to a broken model. It made no sense. So, holes in art projects, just saying. Well, Cave Geeks, of course, has got his little resin printer right now. Hmm. Uh, no, okay, Cave, there wasn't a height limit set on it because I actually, I, I loaded a different version of the model and did it again. And even though the other way should have been fine, the way that I used was uh, like a coming at it from a different tact from a different angle and it, it did it just fine so it, it was very strange
it actually wasn't even that high. It was what? It was 85 millimeters. So what is that? That's like three and a quarter inches. Ish. Three and a third. So. Oh, the uh, the filament. How expensive is the filament? I want to say a, a big reel is like 24 bucks on Amazon, I think. Actually, let me look it up. You, you want to scan? You want to scan for a thong? Yeah. All right, guys. I'm going to back away from this one real slow. That's weird. What happened there? Wait, what, what did happen there? Oh, that's what happened there. Oh, you little shithouse. Okay. So yeah, Princess, um, it is, um, I, I, the one that I use is the one recommended by Tom Tullis of uh, Fat Dragon Games, because he's kind of like the 3D printing guru. And, um, Jedi Master, so I use the eSun PLA Pro for my um, 3D printing, and that goes for about 23 bucks a reel. Yeah. Oh, you did that on the wrong layer. You turd. Did Marlin's girl get herself a raffle ticket, by the way? I have not seen her pop up since she first came in. And see ya, Cave. See ya, Cave. Oh, there she goes. God, I hope I did this right. All right. Last one of these. Okay. Let's get the rest of these battlements done. So let's see. So yeah, it's not a yeah, uh, board gaming's right. It's it's not ink per se. It's actually a it's a thin um, plastic um, filament basically that comes from a giant like spool, uh, almost like think of like a like a big spool of like thread. But it's this it's like a, a it's like a point three or no no not point three point oh three millimeter like plastic wire, and you you run it through your the three D printer, and so it goes through the piping and then goes to the little heated nozzle. So when the thing is, um, when it when it turns on and you're printing something, the heated nozzle is like melting the tip of the filament and it like feeds it through as it builds. And then when it, obviously when it builds whatever object you're doing, it, the, the, the plastic immediately starts to cool as soon as it's out of the, the heated nozzle. So it's kind of a cool, it's kind of a cool process. And then, yeah, and then the spool just slowly rotates over time as it, as you know, you, you print things like, cause a miniature wouldn't use that much spool, uh, much of the, much of the spool. So you can, you know, Actually, I don't know how much would be needed to print a mini. 
much length of the spool you'd need. But, um, but yeah. Oh, Phantom Jen. She said she posted a link to this in the Troll Lords Discord and if they wanted to come and watch. Well, thank you, Phantom Jen. Really do appreciate that. That's actually a really good idea because we are working on a Troll Lord map. That probably a few of those suckers are backed. A few of those suckers, that sounded bad. All right, what I'm doing now, by the way, is just looking to where our castellation should be. Like our outer walls definitely had it. These ones on the inside do not. So, and that's why I'm cross-referencing the actual castle itself. And then right in the corner here, this starts, so right here, this starts doing it again. So let's just do that. But not this outer wall, curiously. Let's get rid of that. Definitely nothing on the inside. I don't know what's going on between Wargaming Recon and Princess Streger. They're talking code. Oh, well, he was, I think he was trying to say BRB. Um, and he accidentally hit BHJ because he was going to go get himself some ice cream. And that's when Princess um, Streger started to try and hack him. No, and, and she redeemed a question time. And so that was her. Uh... Oh, did you indeed? Did you indeed? Well, we could do that. Hold on a sec. So she was wanting book four and then 1076. We could do that. Let me uh, let me just draw this bit. Let's just get a little bit of this going on. And one, two, three, uh, four. Let's draw it. One, two, three, four. A bit tight, but it will work. And then we don't need it here. Solid wall here. Cool. One, two, three, four, five. Don't need it here. Okay. Question time. This is looking good. This is looking good. This is going to be a nice map to finish this with. So Princess said book four, which is the bottom book, 1,076. All right, let's do this. Oh, I'm spooking a cat. She was cleaning herself and pulling books out from my behind her. 1,076. Okay. This is a book. Questions about my future. My future, your future, our future. The question. Name a food you love now that you think you won't eat 20 years from now. Well, first, let me just add. I'll be lucky if I'm even alive 20 years from now. So my cop-out answer could be all foods that I like because I'll be dead. But let's assume that I live a little bit longer than 20 years. That got dark. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but true, it's a transparent answer. Push it across the table. Don't like it? That's okay. I'll take it back. I'll take it back. Uh, no, but seriously, seriously, what food I eat now that I don't think I will eat 20 years from now? You know, knowing my luck, it would actually be spicy food. So some of my favorite foods are, are, are comfort foods like uh, chicken pot pie. I really love chicken pot pie um, or chicken Kiev. But I also have a great passion for um, Indian food, it's curries, that type of thing. Um, like a huge passion for that. And I'd like to push the boundary of the spice that I can get away with. 
I wouldn't be surprised if just, you know, as I get older, a doctor tells me somewhere along the line, cut down on your spicy foods. You know what I'm saying? So I, I maybe, maybe that would be a thing. Yeah, and honestly, if, we, if I'm going to throw a drink in there, I could see a doctor telling me, stop drinking. So maybe 20 years from now, I'm not drinking alcohol anymore. That's a distinct possibility. That was going to be my two. I was going to say alcohol and uh, fried chicken. Oh, you think fried chicken? Yeah, probably because of health reasons. You know, It's not like we eat that much of it. No, I know. I know. But 20 years from now, it's got to be one of those things where... It's like you, your body can't handle the grease and the fried and the fat. It's like just that's stop. true. You that's know, true. It, you know, I'd probably have a doctor be like, "You, you need to chill the fuck out with that. You, you, you need to grill your meat. Don't fry it." Uh, Princess says, uh, "Meat and animal byproducts." Uh, she's actually seriously considering becoming vegan at some point here in the future. Okay, okay, I can respect that. Alex Nixon is thinking. Like, Jack and I, we eat bad foods from time to time, we do, but we don't eat bad foods all of the time, or even with a high degree of uh, occurrences. So it's not like, you know, either one of us are going to be forced off pizzas or forced off, I don't know, steak. It's not, it, we don't even eat red meat that much, maybe twice a year. And actually, that's only been this year. There was, like, many years gap before we'd actually eaten the previous one. So, to a large degree, we don't eat bad foods. So, it's a difficult question. It's a curious question in some ways because of that. says as much as she loves pepperoni she hasn't had it since Halloween and she doesn't even miss it that much why have you stopped eating pepperoni oh let me get rid of it the spam bot hang on oh we got spam bot yeah nuke Dangerous. that spam Dangerous. redeemed spam health reasons she says so wargaming the question um that princess Strega redeemed out of the book the question was in 20 years um what is, what is a food that you enjoy eating now but in 20 years from now you could see yourself not having um and so we were talking about you know that type of thing and so then uh princess brought up the the no uh, she's probably going to cut out um uh, meat and animal byproducts then thinking of going vegan because of that Okay, and she says it's for health reasons. So yeah, it would be for for health reasons, not necessarily um, because you know some people obviously go vegan for you know because of you know you know animal reasons and that thing too. Huh. It's all good, Alex. That's the probably the first one I've had I've gotten a while because you know unless I'm on the stream like this, I typically just have the stream running off to the side and I'm not always in it in it I, I, i'm lurking i'm a lurker um and so if a, a spam bot comes up it, you know unless i hear you know somebody mention it i'm not gonna see it and you know by that time by the time i get over there it's somebody's already taken care of it so feel excuse me i am gonna speaking of alcohol i'm going to get us a little bit of top of exclamation wine but you know not needing to be redeemed in that way chippies oh uh, really really Ah, uh, man, a good chippy. 
I do love my chips. I do love my chips. Why, why, why do you think that you will have to stop eating them in the next, in 20 years time? Thank you, sweetness. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's going to be full mine. He's, he's in the process of doing it. Jed getting all defensive. It's like, oi, Jack, are you going to fill a lizard? She even got the oi in there, which is appreciated. And she says cheers. All right, let's let's mix up the question a little bit. Let let's let's turn this around a little bit. Not what food you think you won't be able to eat in 20 years' time. What food would you really miss if you couldn't eat it in 20 years' time? Like Wargaming Recon. What if a doctor told you, stop eating ice cream, you can't do it anymore. You just can't do it. I, c I could imagine you going, ah, oh, you know? What food would you seriously miss if you were told medically you were not allowed to have it anymore. Alex, uh, Alex Vixen, possible health reasons. From the chips, huh? That's a shame. That's a, that's a bugger right there. I'm not going to talk about chips anymore, Alex Vixen, because I, I'm going to start making you want to go out and get some chips. Chips are good. Thank you, honey for bunny. Mm -hmm. Chocolate, alcohol, spicy food. Oh, really? You know, those are things that you've been told not to have? Like, I'll be honest. If I was told not to have pizza anymore... I'd be a bit bummed, but I'd be okay. If I was told not to eat burgers anymore, I'd be a bit bummed, but I'd be okay. I love those foods, don't get me wrong. But I could get by. I could get by. So I'm, 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 I wonder myself what food I could not live without. Like, would really freaking bum me out if I couldn't have it. You can... Blue Sky, Blackbird, great name. Good to have you here. If you would like to have a chance of winning a t-shirt or a hoodie with one of my maps on it, exclamation raffle. We're doing the draw at the end. In fact, there's my bot telling you what to do. Ooh, uh, Wargaming says dairy. Phantom Jeez, Pinsers. yeah. Yeah, that would be great. Actually, there's a good one. Oh, there's a man. real solid one. Yeah, if the doc simply was like, yeah, no more cheese for you, I'd be like, whoa, wait, what? Yeah, I would struggle with that one. Wait, you're telling me I'm done for? Okay. Cheese actually is a solid one. Yeah, I think I would really struggle with that. Pizza Strecker, you said um, ice cream, didn't you? Yeah, you said ice cream. Yeah, aside from cheese, there's not much in the realm of dairy that I give a crap about. Um, I mean, I, I dig ice cream, but I, if somebody told me you can't have it, I think it'd be okay. Yeah, I'm the same. I dig ice cream, but not like I dig cheese. Yeah. Cheese is everything. And honestly, bacon, I love bacon, 
But if I was told I couldn't have it anymore, I don't think that would be game-changing for me. I'd go, okay. Because there's a lot of other really great meats out there that I really freaking like. Uh, so Blue Sky says that they finally made it. Uh, first time being here. They usually only write the sad messages on Twitter lamenting how it's 3 a.m. Uh, over uh, where they're at. Uh, but they're on vacation now, so they can finally make the stream. Well, I love you, love you, love you for making a stream. You know what? Seriously, hit exclamation raffle in the chat. It enters you into a chance to win one of my maps on a t-shirt or a hoodie. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit for you. And we're going to take a little walkthrough of the Castle Keeper's Guide right here. Because we're working on the last map. There you go. You're entered. Two tickets for you. What we're going to do in about an hour's time. Yeah, in about an hour's time. Less 45 minutes time. We're going to do the drawing. And you have a chance. You've got two tickets to win. And then I will PM you. If uh, if you do win, and we'll we'll figure out hocking you up with the coupon code and so on and so forth. So and we're doing it every stream, by the way. Every stream, plus a Patreon hangout on this Friday, plus uh, which is actually a more reasonable time. Um, plus we're doing a Twitter one, we're doing an Instagram one. So watch out for them and multiple chances to win. All right, so quick walkthrough in honor of Blue Sky Blackbird. The, the imagination that you guys and girls have with your names, by the way. I'm kind of jealous. Kind of jealous. I love some of the names. I really do. We have 12 maps for 12 Lords games. Their project is the Castle Keeper's Guide. Normally, we would draw these on completely separate maps, but not here. Oh, no. We're doing them on one canvas, we're going to colour them on one canvas, and we're going to make a super-sized poster of pure sex appeal. And they are settlements going from our humble Thorpe all the way up to a metropolis, and we do the same from a little tower fortification all the way up to a Greta castle. We have our little Thorpe of just a few homes, a little boat, piggies, etc. Again, these are going to be fully coloured going to draw a nice border around these. I'm hoping to actually work on the border tomorrow night. We've got our hamlet. It has grown somewhat in size. We have our village. Getting a little bit cray cray now. Lots and lots and lots and lots of details. Right down to the stocks and the maypole. And then we start getting into our fortifications. We have the block tower we decided to do a cutaway i was convinced to do a cutaway i should say and then inspired by the cutaway we decided to do with the martin bailey castle but slightly elevated view i really dig that one we've got our marching camp roman style i kind of like that one we've got our castle our first castle i really like this one a huge amount took forever to draw it's gonna be great when it's colored and then we've got our town we've got our city we've got our fortified city this is just getting ridiculous we're gonna call it all of these we got our metropolis and that that's about print size right there that's that's gonna be a lot of coloring and finally, we've got our Greater Castle right here, which we're finishing up the details of tonight. We're actually drawing in the uh, battlements. And this is Crack de Chabellier, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, which is actually this castle right here. It was a Crusader castle, one of the biggest, most impressive Crusader castles in, in actual history. Ruins um, are mostly intact and are still out there today. So that's it. This is a massive, massive, massive project. And it's a thing of beauty. We're going to actually have Stephen Chenault on the channel next year when we're colouring this. He's going to hang out. We're going to talk about this project and future projects. Lord Delius, welcome, welcome, welcome. And Delius has got a raffle ticket too. By the way, if anyone leaves or has to leave, 
uh, before we draw in about 40 minutes time don't worry about it the, the the machine will capture your name and we will contact you okay it might be on a twitch pm so watch out for that so actually so here's here's the um beautiful thing about this uh, blue sky is all of my maps are available on canvas through nobledwarf.com on various sizes and they blow up really big and it's archive quality canvas it's beautiful beautiful material this will be one of them if you've not seen my maps before they're all over there for the most part gaxmore isn't there yet because i want to wait till troll lord gets that one out for example but a lot of my maps are over there this will be a map that is on canvas for sure Hey, Green Looms here. Hello. Lord Delius. Oh, Torn Armour. That, I'm going to admit, it is a... When I say those words, I die a little bit inside, and you know why. Uh, unfortunately, the Kickstarter, that means I will probably never again do another Kickstarter, which is a real shame. Because I would love to do a book of maps or something like that, or a guide of how to draw maps, but... It is what it is what it is. A interesting part of my history, for sure. And your history. Hello, GL. Here's the kicker, though. Here's the kicker. It's a war game and recon. The miniatures are actually out there. Um, I don't know the name of the company, and I should off the top of my head. But they actually have exclusive rights to uh, produce those miniatures. And they have, they created the molds, which, by the by, goes to show that the miniatures were fine. Right? Yeah, they, they could be actually made into miniatures. But anyway, they've actually got the miniatures. They've produced them. They're out there. They, I believe, contacted Kickstarter, uh, Kickstarter backers and made an offer to them to get some of the miniatures. So, yes. But at least part of the project lives on. Lord Delius, thank you very much. I really mean that. I really, really, really do. It, it, it was a life experience, without a doubt. Without a doubt. And a huge, let's call it fiscal experience. It was um, interesting times, not gonna lie. In this household, uttering that name now, crushes souls, it crushes souls. I will admit, look, I'm gonna admit here on camera, okay? That project had me curled up on the kitchen floor, sobbing my heart out. True story, true story. I, I would love one day to be able to move past it. And I'm not sure I ever will. There's a fun fact about Alyssa Faden. You don't even need to play the mini games to get it. Well, I, I wasn't um, in that exact situation on the floor crying. Um, I, too, uh, wish that one day I can get past it, but I don't think I ever will either. And Lord Dalius, I actually really appreciate you dropping in and even talking candidly like this, and I truly mean that. Because um, I tend to be the same way on Kickstarter. I'm not saying that everyone should be. I'm not saying that's what they should expect to get. But it is one of the things that happens, right? Thank you, Wargaming, for the cheers. Really appreciate it. Um, I've backed a lot of Kickstarters and continue to do so. And they could go on two years, three years, five years... I may never get some. Okay. It's not, I'm, I don't even say those are the risks, but it's like, I feel Kickstarter is about trying to help someone realize, at least in part, realize a dream to get something off the ground and they may run into real problems. And that's what it's about, you know? We're, it, it, I don't want to say we're investors, but it was certainly funding a dream. And that dream can crash and burn for a multitude of reasons. That's the attitude I have. I don't expect everyone to have it. But I I actually really appreciate the fact that you do have that. 
Well, and I, and I think that was obviously the original intent behind a, a site like Kickstarter. It was supposed to be, hey, this person is trying to get their dream realized, you know, help support them. And then it, suddenly it became a, it was almost like people were assuming they were basically like order, ordering something off of like an, a delayed Amazon. Like they are going to get 100% the thing that they said that they were going to get. And if they don't, they will burn your house down. And it was like, but wait, what do you, what? Yeah, it's not, this isn't Amazon, fellas. This is, you know, you know, you're trying to help people move along. It sounds like, you know, um, Lord Delius, you, you have the, you, you have the similar mindset that we do when we go into, you know, those types of projects where it's like, hey, I hope you guys do it. I look forward to it if you do. And, you know, good luck, you know, I support you and all that you do, because this is clearly an important project to you. You know, there are so many people that are, that they have this weird sense of entitlement. Um, and it's, 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 it's kind of a bad mindset. And then they can, they carry on that mindset into other projects. And I, I, I have to admit some, some companies don't make it um, easy for smaller product for smaller people, because when you have known companies that use Kickstarter, that are like, wait, but you guys already have your infrastructure set up. You have your production lines. You have your distribution lines. You have your marketing all set up. You actually already have all the resources you need to create this product. You've done it before. Why are you kickstarting it? Because um, they're like, we want a lot of money now. Um, and so, and they kind of, they kind of hurt the, the the small producer, the small project people. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of sad in a way. Well, and that's one of the dynamics that completely uh, changes um, Kickstarter, right? You know, when you've got companies uh, coming in saying, okay, here's our Kickstarter, and we've already made it. It's already sitting here. It's like, okay, so... We're just buying shit at that point. And uh, th that makes a very different dynamic for everyone else. Holy scamoli. Whoa, there Holy. are some cheers. Cheers, 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 cheers. Wargaming Rico, much love to you. Much, 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 much love. Wowzers, yes. 300 bits, that's that's crazy. Thank you, my friend. Wow. Thank you, good sir. I, I still am in the, of the mindset that that, uh, that, that, that animation's a little um, secretly lewd. <laughs> what animation? It's the unicorn coming out of the, the heart. It's a... Uh, Oh, is that what it is? Oh, oh, Jack. Jack, call. Sir. Sir. That's part of the reason why... So, Wargaming's in the my, same mindset. <laughs> so that's part of the reason why he uses it. Alex Vixen. Exactly. Exactly. And you know what? You know what? Earlier on, someone redeemed the bean. And I think it, well, that sounds dirty, too. Um, but it's going to make a lot of sense right now. I think it was Wargaming Recon. So we are going to do a special segment called Redeem the Bean. Which is awfully, awfully, awfully gross. But here we go. So if you're new to the channel, not been here much, Redeem the Bean. This here, there's thousands of beans from good beans, horrible beans. And I'm talking about they taste like dog shit. They taste like vomit. And it's 50-50. I don't know what I'm going to get. Some of the bad ones are super hot. Like Carolina Reaper hot. And I don't know what I'm going to get. And one of the games in this channel is you can redeem the bean if you've got enough channel currency. All you've got to do is either be subscribed, follow me, participate in chat, watch the channel host the channel these all earn you channel currency and right now what give me recon as you uh, used some of that channel currency for what i'm about to eat and i don't know what it is oh uh, we're giving you did you did another 300 good lordy thank you again wow more more lewd unicorns what game that's actually not a bad bean my friend that's not a bad bean Considering that I could have been licking dirt off the floor in taste. I don't know what it is. I think it's orange. A fake orange. But it's orange. 
what is the what is the what is the the the, the easy guide to figure out what the um oh there we go elisafaden.com slash cloudbot there we go today thank you blue sky good beam believe me when i get a bad one they're really freaking bad that that is not a pleasurable experience i don't think it's meant to be right oh princess is saying that she redeemed one earlier as well Princess Strucker did indeed redeem a bean. I will be right there. So what we do on um, the even beans is Jack gets one on the Monday nights. Monday nights is Jack night. So on camera, Jack is going to pull out a bean. Okay, he's blindfolded when he did it. He's now going back to his desk to eat the bean. Is Pex here? Did Pex come in the channel? No, I'm gonna guess he's not here. All right, Jack's gonna eat the bean. I'm. I am scared. Just so everybody knows, I'm scared because I got a vomit one last time I did this. Yeah, it was not. It was not good experience. All right. So, what are you experiencing, Jack? Hmm. Hmm. I'm afraid to chew or swallow. Mm-mm. 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 Mm, -mm. mm, -mm. mm a bad one. Oh, it's a bad one. Mm-mm. 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 <laughs> Blue Sky did... For me, did a cheer. Good bean! They did a cheer for you. Bad bean! Mm. <laughs> I, I feel like this is... And like, uh, something like, um... Bloody Mad Max with the crowd going, Yay, good bean! And then, Yay, bad bean! <laughs> mm. mm -mm. Alright, Jack, I don't mean to, like. I, I gotta be right back. I gotta be right back. Oh, that bad hair. Huh? Oh, oh, that was a bad bean. That was a bad bean. There you go. That's how bad some of those beans get. Yeah, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. He's just spitting it out, I'm sure. <laughs> Green Lantern. Man down! Man down! It, no, seriously. You know when I sit here and I go, Oh no. Oh, oh no. No, no, no. They get that bad. Okay. <laughs> Alex Vixen so, says, We will not be thinking less of you if you launch the bean like a trebuchet across the room. <laughs> um, like, no. So I rinsed my mouth with both water and whiskey now. Um, so that was spoiled milk. Um, 100% spoiled milk. Oh, God, that's nasty. That's and, nasty. Um, spoiled dairy product is pretty much the number one thing if you want me to... Um, vom myself. So that was um, that was uh, that was a rude awakening there. That's uh, I do it, do it for the entertainment. Do it for the entertainment. Good well, Lord, thank you, Jack, for order. doing it for the entertainment because yes, they are pretty darn gross. Is this what it feels gross. like when like a bodyguard jumps in front of the way of a bullet? Because I think I just saved you right there. <laughs> <laughs> I think he probably did. Oh, good lord. I would rather have a vomit one again than have what I just had. Uh, at least that one I was actually able to consume it fully. No, that 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 spoiled milk one was 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 um that was not good at all. Whew. Lordy. Lord have mercy. Jesus take the wheel. Whew. Um I'm sorry that you had that one, Jack. That's alright. Um, 
<laughs> Everybody's cheering for beads now. <laughs> um, GL, uh, yeah, you, you were uh, here right when we launched it. We actually started off the stream talking about uh, uh, Cyberpunk. We, we have been experiencing bugs, but for the most part, both Alyssa and I find it outstanding. Aside from the bugs. Yes, and I am going to stream it for sure. I just don't know when. I don't want to promise. Because you know what? Like, I was going to stream yesterday, then I started playing, and I suck sometimes. Like, I suck war uh, warming up. Um, so it's either the bugs or me sucking. It's like, you, you don't want to watch that. You don't want to watch me, like, play like a right idiot. So I didn't, like, you know, share it. But I, d I do want to. I do want to stream it. I did, seriously. I want to do that. I don't think I would ever stream it because then everyone would see that I'm a cold-hearted bastard when I play video games. Well, and actually, funny enough, so, okay, serious, seriously now, for the people that like to, like, tune in and see, you know, me just doing things, um, Cyberpunk is actually a pretty adult-related, um, adult-orientated game. And I mean that by, there, there's, there's, a, a scene I did yesterday, there was a cut scene that I did yesterday that was pretty, it was adult, it was full on adult. Like, I looked at this thing going, oh, balls, like if I was Twitch streaming this right now, would I get, would I get like a slap on my wrist? Would I get banned? It was that type of thing. And it's pretty graphic too, which at times makes me go, oh, I'm not sure Wargame would like this. So I'm, I kind of want to stream it. I want to stream me just playing the game. Why the hell not, right? But at the same time, I wonder if it would hit some of you wrong, actually, in just the content. Yeah, when you were... I know which one you were talking about. Obviously, no spoilers or anything. But yeah, when you were describing it, I was like, oh, God, that's a kind of a horror movie. <laughs> yeah, there was something I was doing yesterday that was very adult-related. It was, it was very adult. By the way, I've lost the uh, pointer on my mouse. You can't see it. I've completely lost the pointer on my mouse. I'm very, very, very tempted to reboot uh, my Photoshop right now. Because it's going to make drawing very difficult. But the Twitch stream will continue. Uh, Joe, uh, it will okay. work gaming his pe penis gate. Yes. Um, that is certainly a thing, isn't it? It's funny how um, it, it, you say that people aren't happy with all the nudities. I know for your own your own special character. Oh, we're looking at your desktop. What's going on? Yeah, because I'm rebooting Photoshop. You were oh, paying okay. attention. Sorry, I was trying to read the chat. Um, it's funny how people are upset by the nudity when for the player character it's optional. And then if there's nudity in the world, um, I think it's one of those things that isn't your character the only one that gets nude? Huh. I think it's purely optional, and then if it's not, I mean, the game does straight up. Is well, I, I, so what was it for me? What, what was I experiencing? Well, I think okay, so uh, multiple things. One, just even in the advertisements, etc., around you all of the time. Not all of the time. I don't want to exaggerate, but there, there's a lot of like the, the cyberpunk universe has become almost this. You know, uh, certainly parts of the city. Parts of the city are like appealing to the depravity of man, right? So there are advertisements and billboards and things that are really sort of appealing to that. Make naked men, make naked women, or even a suggestion of sex uh, is going on it, uh, uh, just around you. And then I experienced something, I think, yesterday where th there was nudity going on. I don't know if it was a naked dancer or something, whatever. Um, it doesn't bother me, but it certainly made me think... Like, I, I, in fact, it was a woman that... Oh, it was a woman that was getting naked and getting it on with you as the, your character. And I was like, oh, shit, if I was streaming this right now, would this be a problem? It was... It was... It, it was um, adult-orientated. Like, you wouldn't want kids, like, you know, playing it.
Was it PewDie Die? Uh, PewDie Pie? Was it him? That uh, I thought it was someone else that shared the penis. That yeah, PewDiePie. I don't buy. I don't buy the whole transphobic thing. By the way, I've played the game, and I think people are digging to hate on the game somehow. But the two major, major, major complaints that I've heard of that ilk are completely baseless. So they're bullshit. Well, Alex Fixon, you get it, right? I mean, there is a there is a part of the city that is adult. I mean, that's just the way it is. Yeah, it's true. That is true. Yeah, I was trying to remember the name of the neighborhood off the top of my head, but it's like that whole that whole area is like adult themed. Well, and I don't want to. We're not going to do any spoilers on the channel, okay? That that that's one thing that we don't do here. But um, Jack, you you the 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 section of the game that you were in. And I got into this morning. Mm -hmm. That. That yes. section was yeah. what I experienced, obviously, last night. And I was like, shit, if I was streaming this, yeah, I'm not sure how think, that would go across. I don't think that would have been. Yeah, I was talking about that other thing that you were talking about, the um, the religious thing. Um, well, actually, the religious thing, too. So there was there's a lot of side quests in the game, guys and girls. And it's one side quest where a guy who's devoutly religious, wants to be crucified. And you have to make this decision about if you want to help him or not. And I could see I could see that sparking some people, you know? I I personally, I personally, and I'm not even religious, I, I kind of, it was an emotional hit to me. Like, I sat there going, fuck. Which I kind of want to get on my game. I want my games to really hit me. In the emotion, you know? And this game definitely does that. But it's also a game where, like, if I was streaming this, how many people am I going to piss off, you know? I guess it'd be one of those things where if you were going to stream it, you'd have to... You, you'd have to almost curate what you were doing, you know, so to speak. Like, you'd have to be like, well, these are the certain things that I'm going to try to do or not do. Like, maybe I'm going to destroy a bunch of, like, the, you know, gangsters creating, doing crimes, you know, that type of thing. You're not going to do the graphic ones, you know, too much. You see, so, uh, and by the way, Wargaming, um, it was extremely well done. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, and maybe we could even chat about it on our Hangout coming this Friday. Um... It was not in any way belittling religion at all. Um, it, 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 it really, honestly, was extremely emotional. Um, but it's a type of thing where... I'm just not sure like how safe that is to stream, you know? Have I played Life is Strange? Jack, I'm familiar with that name. I am. Um, that was one that I, that was one that I played. Okay, okay. So maybe you can answer that one. Um, I have indeed played it. Alyssa has not. Um, I, I I played it. Um, you 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 didn't play it, but you watched it as a viewer. Uh, yes. Uh, that is. I would probably have it in my top games of all time, like my top ten of like games of all time. And yes, I was an emotional wreck at various stages in the in the game. Um, some of them were moments of pure elation and joy, and some of them were I was devastated or I was just beside myself in tears. That Life is Strange is a fantastic game, and I haven't played the second one. I know it doesn't fully connect um, with the the first one, but the they made like a prequel game called Before the Storm, um, that's uh, that takes place before Life is Strange, uh, and that one is is wonderful as well. Not not as good, but it's pretty good. Like if if Life is Strange is like a, I would give it like a nine point five. Um, the Before the Storm is probably like an eight or an eight point five out of ten, not out of like fifty.
By the way, as a time check, we'll be going for about 15 more minutes. So in about 10 minutes time, we're going to announce the winner of the raffle. Each stream this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. During the special chat for Twitch subscribers and subscribers of the chat. Uh, Twitch subscribers, that's the same thing. And Patreon backers. You get to hang out with me on Friday. We just sit back, we chill, we drink, we talk about whatever we want to talk about. That one, and three times next week on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, we're going to be doing giveaways. And tonight, there is a giveaway. Exclamation raffle gets you a ticket. In about 10 minutes time, we're going to do the drawing for that. Tonight's prize is a t-shirt or a hoodie you pick from nobledwarf.com of one of my maps on that chosen medium. They have women's uh, 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 styles, they have tank tops too, that you could do, hoodies, etc. So, yeah. This is the 12 days of Elizabeth, and this will be ticket or winning number one. What's next on this thing, on this map? Those the little, um, the, like the roadways? Yeah, so I'm down below the, 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 this elevation and this elevation. The shadows will show that the best way. But um, I'm kind of just like penciling in where people have trodden pretty heavily. And wargaming. No, I get it, man. I get it totally. I really do. A shrubbery. A shrubbery. Um, I would actually, in a way, love for you to see that entire quest sequence. I think you would end up crying. You know, it, it was an emotional ride. Uh, and it wasn't at all in any way anti-religion. At all. Um, in fact, there was plenty of ways to participate um, as a religious character with it, you know? And I think, if anything, that would have just hit even freaking harder. It, I, by the way, I did... I, I, I participated as a spiritual character with it. And um, it was... It was... It was a... It was pretty fucked up. It was pretty fucked up. Uh, but, as, as part of a game... Shadows... As part of a game, it was it was thought provoking, honestly, and I think that's what they wanted to get out of it. It was extremely thought provoking, as you had to make not not only um, moral choices, but you had to um, make like spiritual choices. You had to make spiritual choices on that one. Like, and how many fucking games do that? It was it was something. It was. It was something else. I'm gonna hit save right now. I don't wanna even say that it was a world setting. It you know what it was, Wargaming? It was it was a, a dichotomy to the world setting. It it, it was it was one's man journey away from the world setting towards religion or Christianity particularly in this instance it was him seeking forgiveness that's what it was and it was powerful because of that extremely powerful like just thinking about it now gets me emotional you know and any game that can do that, any writing that can do that, is doing something special. And so I've got, I've got to give them props for going out there on that one. On that category, then, kind of going, um, kind of going off of emotional, and what, it, what games for both not not only you, Alyssa, but for people here in the chat, what games, whether it be maybe a role playing experience at the table or. or it, it, because we're talking about cyberpunk maybe it was a video game either a computer game or a console game but what is a game that 
for you gave you a probably one of your most powerful emotional experiences well uh, so i'll i'll go first on that um i'm gonna i'm gonna name two others because clearly i've spoken about the uh, religious crucifixion um scene in cyberpunk and i'm probably honestly miscategorizing it when i say that it was a it was a spiritual journey of a man seeking forgiveness that's what it was and it was powerful as fuck because of it but i, I want to name two others one was actually the entire trilogy of assassin's creed 2 um, it was in three parts and i played all three parts back to back uh enzio if i remember rightly and the way that one ended made me cry i cried at the end of that game it's a computer game i cried it invoked the same sort of emotion from me as you know a, a um a film would get for all of the same reasons so that one and actually honestly the end of red dead redemption one i cried at that one too so those are mine Yeah, the Assassin's Creed 2, it was it was two and then Brotherhood and Revelations. That was like that that was that trilogy, that Assassin's Creed trilogy, Assassin's Creed 2 trilogy. Yeah. Um I actually remember that when you finished that and you were you were oddly moved by it. You were it uh, it made you it made you a bit sad and I was like, "Ah. Oh, that's awesome." I think any game that can get you attached to a character and then something happens to that character you're going to have an emotional reaction to it and red dead definitely 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 did that one for me right. and wargaming i know that you're talking about prison architect there the first time you sent someone to the uh, execution chamber i think that is a perfect example that's uh, that's tough that's tough What about you, Jack? And I kind of know one of them. Um, well, obviously, uh, you know, Life is Strange, as I mentioned. Um, the uh, the Telltale Games, The Walking Dead, was um, a big one as well. Um, it's very similar in the vein of uh, Life is Strange. It was a, a point-and-click visual adventure. I mean, it's not really point and I mean, it's point-and-click, but you can, you know, you can do other movements around, like, but um, yeah, The Walking Dead season one, as it's now called, um, by Telltale Games. That one was pretty, pretty gosh dang emotional for me. Um, trying to think off the top of my head. Let me actually, I'm gonna fire up a, my list of recent games and see if there. I think it was The Walking Dead one games. where you you came downstairs i was playing a game of my own or something and you were clearly still very very emotional from it yeah yeah that was the one where i was coming down to let you know i finished my game and i was i was still a bit of an i was still a bit of an emotional mess from that one like, for sure oh god so something happened <laughs> yeah I mean, like all the things happened <laughs> it's so bad um Oh, well, Wargaming Recomp, talking about Prison Architect. The entire game stops. There is a series of tasks to complete, including escorting members of the victim's family and religious clerics to the witness room, putting the entire prison in lockdown, and then flipping the switch and having the staff come to remove the body. The music, everything is rough. Wow. You see, yeah, exactly. That sounds rough. Wow. Once Jack has, by the way, come forward with his um, extra game of um, emotion, I think we... Actually, I think there's a front gate. There's a front gate here. Right here. So I'm just going to draw in a little path right here. I think we're done with the ink work. You all get to witness it. Of Troll Lord Games. The Castle Keeper's Guide. We literally have all of the ink done. We are going to start colouring next. We're good. Well, I think we'll start colouring tomorrow. But I need to draw a frame, right, around all of this. 
she says like sweeping like that's gonna work but i actually have this frame idea so i think tomorrow night we're gonna draw the frame and we're gonna start coloring i think that's what we're gonna do we're done ink work on this map Fidido. So, Jack's still, like, looking at... Let's do the raffle, shall we? We're about... We're coming up to the one and a half hours mark. Let's do the raffle. And let's figure out if I can figure out how to do the raffle. So, we... We don't do that. That is Edge. We don't want Edge. Let's click on this one instead. Okay. And then I go to... Cloudbot... Giveaways... There we go. We have our... I've got everyone down here. Everyone down here that has participated in the raffle drawing. This is your last opportunity if you're lurking in the background. Exclamation raffle. It will get you a ticket, okay? I'm going to give you 10 seconds. Fox Vixen says... Oh, we'll, we'll get to that after your 10 seconds. Ooh, Edgebarian. Edgebarian sneaking in right at the end. Good job. Good job. All right. I'm going to do the draw. I'm going to do the draw. We're going to close entries. No longer. Pick a winner. Done. There it is. There it is. Wargaming Recon. Hey, Wargaming. Congrats. Commiserations for everyone else that did not win tonight, but we are drawing Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, and next week, and on Twitter, and on Facebook, and on Instagram. Watch out for the other ways that you can win. But night one of the 12 days of Elysimus, Wargaming Recon. Congratulations, sir. Uh... Good job. Good job. I will obviously contact you, my friend, and we will hook you up with a t-shirt or a hoodie. Oh, right. I don't have another one to contribute, but Alex Vixen has one for her Skyrim. Okay. There was a little side quest in where you re reunite two lovers that had been looking for each other for two centuries and had become ghosts. It made me uh, have a little squeak. I think I remember that one. I think I remember that one. That's a good one. Congrats. Well, there you go. And uh, again, congratulations to Wargaming Recon. Really, kudos to you for winning the first night of Elysimus. We're going to do this every year, okay? So you just won night one of all of them. But we will be doing this again Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. More giveaways, different things. We will be doing it on our Twitch and Patreon Hangout on Friday. If you are subscribed to either, make sure you hang out with us. And then we will be doing it next week. And we will be on Facebook doing it. And Twitter doing it. And Instagram. Also, all of my channels. Lots and lots and lots of goodies to give away yet. So with that said, I think this is a great point to end it. We have our castle drawn. We have it, we have it all done. It, we've just drawn everything. Okay, we've drawn the universe right here and we're going to get into drawing a frame now what i'm going to do with the frame is i'm going to do one piece of it i've got it in my head what i want to draw we're going to draw one piece in the corners and then we're just going to start cloning it so i'm hoping that once i get my segment done we can basically just clone it per map and start coloring per map and we're just going to jump into them and just go I'm just going to go. So, that's what we're going to do tomorrow night. So, with that said, I think this is a perfect time for us to end it. I'm going to hit save right here. I want to thank you, all of you, for hanging out with me tonight. It, I really, really, really mean that. I, I really do. And we'll be back tomorrow night. So, come back. Let's hang out again. Until then, I love you. And I'll see you all on the flip side.
Thank you, everyone. Huge amount of love to all of you. And especially you Twitch subscribers and the Patreon backers. You empower me. That said, Jack, say good night. Night. That was quick and it was modest and to the point. Night, everyone. Much love. See you tomorrow.